Hello and welcome back to our Tinkercad tutorial series. This is Mr. Russo bringing you part three, which is copy, duplicate, and grouping objects in Tinkercad. Unlike the other tutorials that we've done, this one is going to be slightly different that instead of just specifically learning commands and making some basic things with it, this time we're actually going to be making a full project. So it's really important that you follow along through each and every step. And if you need to, if I'm moving a little bit too fast for you, feel free to pause the video at any time and you can reduce the speed or use any of the timestamps that will be in the video in order to go back or continue your work. For Tinkercad tutorial three, we're going to press create. We're going to create a new 3D design and we're going to rename this to Tinkercad tutorials number three. The first thing that we're going to need in order to do this is we're going to need to bring out a box onto our work plane, which is going to be the base for what we're going to be creating. For this tutorial series, the best way to learn how to copy, duplicate, and group is by making a 3D model. So for this, we're going to be making a demo home that is going to have 12 windows, two entryways with a roadway and a roof. And on that roof, we're actually going to create shingles as well. So it is quite involved. Just make sure that you're following along and I promise everyone can do this. So let's drag out a box onto our work plane and let's change the size of this to the actual size of our home. The size of our home is going to be 60 by 30. And the height should be 20, which is perfect. It already is 20. Now to create the inside of our home, we actually are going to need to duplicate or copy and paste this object and then reduce its size a little. So to duplicate, there are two different ways of doing it. There's a short command as well as a button command. We can click the object and if you move your mouse to the top left, you'll see that there is an option for duplicate and repeat. If I click this, you'll see it doesn't look like anything happened, but it actually duplicated the object on top of the original. If I drag it to the side, there it is. Now, there are going to be times where you don't want to duplicate. When is that one of those times? Very likely, a lot of the times when you're clicking the work plane and you're moving it to a different side, you do not want to duplicate as it won't go really where you want it to be. And you're going to want to copy paste. So to copy paste, you can click the object, go to the top left, hit copy or control C. Click the area where you kind of want to shift it over to. So I'm going to say for it to shift it over to the right and then hit paste. And there it is. And now it's shifted over to the right. There's my object. I could also delete that again. I'm going to click this. I'm going to copy it, holding control and pressing C, clicking to the right and hit holding control and pressing V. And there's the same way of doing it. So you have two different avenues. For us, we're going to duplicate just to get started. So I'm going to hold control, press D, duplicate my object. I always prefer using these short commands and I almost, you will never see me create a model and end up coming over here to click anything, but to each their own, everyone has their own system and their own way of doing it. So the first thing we need to do is we need to make this into a hole. So in the box over here, you'll actually see the solid and hole. We're going to click hole. And the reason that we're doing this is we need to cut into the inside of this as so we can set up the entire frame of the house. So this can't be the same exact size because that isn't possible. We wouldn't have any walls. So we're going to actually reduce the size of this from 30 to 28 and from 60 to 58. For the height of this, let's make this oversized. Let's make this 30 and you'll see why in a moment. Now let's move this into place. Now, one thing that you would notice that could be a problem is that if I were to group these objects to cut in, you see how that is on the very, very, very bottom. That means if I cut it, it's going to actually cut off the bottom of the house, meaning we won't have a floor. That is a problem. 
So we need to take this box and we need to move it up just one millimeter. So to do that, I'm gonna hold the little cone on top, drag it up once, and I can check on the bottom right, it says one, and then I can position it into place. Now let's say I'm having a really hard time positioning. I can't drag this into place for no matter what I do. You can always click the object, you can use the arrow keys, and you can always reduce the snap grid if you need to be more precise. So for myself, I can see that this is perfectly in line. So what I wanna do now is I want to cut out the whole inside of this. So what I'm gonna do is I have to select these two objects and then I'm gonna group them together. So there's a couple of different ways of doing this. You could left click with your mouse and drag to select the objects that you want as there might be a third object on there that you don't wanna include. But let's say you wanna exactly what's on your work plane. You wanna select everything. You could hit Control A, which would select all, meaning it'll select everything. Or what you could do is you could click one object, hold Shift, click the other object, and then it will individually select those two objects as the two things you want highlighted to prepare them for grouping. To group, it's really simple. There is a button you can click for grouping, or you can use the short command, which is Control G. So when I group, you'll see that it's actually going to cut a hole inside. If something like this happens and it's not loading immediately for you, you could press reload in your browser and it will reload the page and you'll actually see that the cut is done, like I just did. It happens every once in a while. And if you get a pop-up and it says rate limit exceeded, that is something that can happen, not a big deal. Reload the page and then all of your work will be there. Tinkercad does a really good job at saving your work periodically so you don't run into these problems. So we have the frame of our house. Now, the next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to create these uh, doorways. All right, because we're gonna make the doors first. I think that's the best way to do this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the right-hand side where we search for shape and let's type in door. And this is perfect. We want this double entry door right here. So I'm gonna drag this out. And it is a very, very, very big door. So we're gonna to need to change the size of that. So let's make the height of this 10. And let's make, ooh. Actually, let's make that 10. And let's make this 12. There you go, that looks pretty good. So it's 10 by 12. Now, if I just plop this right here, there's no way you're getting in and out of this. So I need to actually create a hole first before I can put this into place. So the first thing I'll do is I want to bring out another one of these boxes and I wanna make this box the same size as this door, which I know I made it 10 by 12. So I'll make this 10. 12 and then I'm not going to want to cut that much away from the inside of my house and I don't want to cut it on the floor either there's no such thing where you go into a doorway and there's no floor so I'm gonna also bring this up by one and I'm going to center this as best I can make sure that that's popping through on both sides which it is and then I'm going to hold shift click these two objects and I'll group them together. And there we go. I've got my hole. That's where my door is gonna go. Is it perfectly centered? No, but it'll do. Now I can move this into place and I'm gonna have to pull this up by one. And there is my door frame. Looks great. If I use my arrow keys, you can see that I can move it in and out but it's not going exactly where I want it to go. And that has a lot to do with the snap grid. I'm going to change the snap grid to 0.5 and now I'm getting it where it's half in, half out. That's exactly what I wanted. Now we're gonna wanna duplicate this entire process that we just did for the middle over here on the right-hand side. So I don't wanna redo all this. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to move this back out. I'm going to 
undo the group that I did. And you'll see why, you're gonna think I'm a little crazy. But over here, there's a button for ungrouping. I'm gonna hit, or I can use Control Shift G. For now, I'll click the button. And you'll see that this box that I made for the hole over here, there it is. So what I'm gonna do now is now I wanna duplicate this so I can just copy it right over here. So here's the thing, if I duplicate this, I'm gonna have to drag it out, I'm gonna have to rotate it, and I wanna see if I can just copy paste. So I'm gonna control C to copy that. I'm gonna change the work plane. So I click the work plane over here and I put it on this wall because I want it to be over here. And I'm going to control V paste, just not kind of how I wanted it to go. So I'll rotate this. By the way, if you try to just rotate without holding shift, you can get more precise rotations, but we don't wanna do that. So hold shift and then you can rotate it to 90 degrees. We wanted to click the work plane again, put it back on the bottom. And we knew that this was one millimeter off the ground. So when we drag this up, type in one. And now we can position this, check that it's going through both, which it is. And that I'm pretty happy with where that is. Now I can click the object, hold shift, click the two holes that I made and control G to group them together. And now I have my two entryways. Now I don't wanna to have to remake this door. So I'm going to control D to duplicate that, drag it over. I'm gonna rotate this. When I rotate this, I'm gonna hold shift and rotate that 90 degrees. And now I can drag that into place. I'm gonna use my arrow keys just so I can see that it's popping through on both sides. Same thing. I'll drag this over, use my arrow keys. Now you can see it's popping in on both sides and that is looking wonderful. Now I don't wanna to have to redo this again. So I'm gonna group all of this together. To do that, I'm grouping everything. I'm gonna hit Control A to select all and then Control G to group it all. And now it will make this one solid object, which is exactly what we want. So now we're making progress. The next thing we're going to want to do is we want to add our windows. So to add our windows, what do we do? The first thing we're going to do is go on the right hand side, search shapes, window. And this is the window we want, window four pane. I'm gonna warn you now, when we drag this out, it's going to be massive. Yep, just like that, it's kind of huge. So the first thing we'll do is we are going to make this six by six. And then the depth of this, we are going to make this, actually, you know what, make it easy, make it one. All right. So we know that this window is six by six by one. Let's move it over just so that we know it'll be right up against the wall. We are going to move that and then we can actually use the pull tool. So then we can make that zero. So it's right up against the house. But once again, before we put this in place, we can't see out this window if it's not a hole but this time I'm a little lazy. So I wanna do something a little bit easier. So I'm gonna get this into position, right? To where I want it to be. And I'm gonna say that looks pretty good. That's where I want it to be, okay? Once I have my window aligned, I know that my window size is six by six. In order to be able to see out of this window, I'm going to need another block and I'm going to have to make it six by six, same way the other one was. And I'm gonna have to change that a little, wait, I changed that. So it's six by six, so it's the same size as, as the window. I'll put that into the same position that that one's in. I'll move this over for now. So I'll get this where I want it to be. And now I'm gonna need to cut a hole for the window. I don't wanna to have to remake this later. So I'm gonna duplicate this using Control D and move that to the side. 
select the house, select that, control G to group that together. Now that it made the hole, I can take my window, I can drag it into position, and we're looking pretty good. Now I wanna do that again, right? So I'm gonna duplicate this hole that I created. I'm gonna drag it into position so it's lined up with the other one. And while we're at it, let's take this other box and let's bring it to the side so that we don't have to keep redoing this and we can keep remaking these. Now the duplicate tool has a little trick that if you need to duplicate things several times in a row, it'll actually remember how much you space something out. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate this box that I put on the side over here. So I hit Control D and I'm gonna drag it over. And once I get it to where I want it to go, I have to just hit Control D again. If you see over here, see how that's highlighted? It's noticing that it's 11 inches away from the last one that I made. When I hit Control D, it actually shifts it over and then shifts it over again. So these two, obviously I don't wanna cut through here. I'm gonna click this, hold shift, click this, and now I could drag them over to where I want them to be. Same thing, I'm gonna want these windows in the same exact position on the other side, right? So, hold shift, select all four of these, control D to duplicate that, and now I can drag them over to the opposite side and I can get those lined up exactly where I want it to be. And let's say I wanna add a one more window right there. So I'm gonna duplicate that and put that in the center. So this has five windows, They'll, that'll have two, and that'll have four, and we'll leave the back of the house. The back of the house doesn't need any windows. This, ha this house is gonna have a lot of light. The next thing I wanna do is I don't wanna have to remake this window, so I'm gonna select it and hit Control D. I'm gonna move this over, and now I'm gonna drag over my entire house so it'll cut all those holes for me, and I'm gonna group it all together. I'm gonna press Control G. I'm gonna have to wait because this is quite a bit of grouping, but you will see it will, it's going to cut every single window for us and make it a whole lot easier. And there we go. Now we're in business. Now we're ready to put all of our windows in place. So let's just drag this into place, get this window where we want it to be, which it should be inset in a little, which is perfect. Now I'm gonna hit Control D to duplicate that. I'm going to need to rotate this 90 degrees. So I'm gonna hold Shift. And once I rotate it 90 degrees, I can move this into frame. Uh-oh, we have a problem. Our windows are slightly too big. You know why? Because we actually needed to rotate our objects. Not a huge deal, but what we can do if we wanted to fix this is we could resize every single thing, but for the sake of what we're doing, it's okay because these are all going to be exactly the same. So we're gonna put our window in place and we're just going to increase the size from six, let's say to seven. Okay, not a huge deal. So we our windows on the side will be seven, so it'll be slightly longer, that's okay. And now we're gonna duplicate this again, Control D, drag this into place. I'm gonna have to use my arrow keys to get that in. I'm gonna select both of these, Control D again. So now I have two windows and I'm dragging them over. Put those in place. And now for the opposite side, I'm gonna hit I'm gonna select these two again, Control D, move those back. Now, because of the way these windows are set up, I have to actually rotate them around. So I'll use my rotation tool to move them 180 degrees. Get those into position. Let's Duplicate those two again, Control, select them both, hit Control D. Move, the, move these to the very end because we know that spacing is still correct. 
that's the same spacing we use on the opposite side. And then for our final window, we're going to need to individually put this one in. So we'll select any of these windows, hit Control D, and then we'll move it into place. And there we go. We're making a pretty fancy house here. So we have our six by six windows with our double doors in the front, our seven by six windows on the sides, no windows in the back. And then we have four seven by six with a double door in the front. Let's group this all together because we don't want to have to redo any of this. So control A to select it all and control G to group it. Awesome. So it's time for our roof. So to add the roof, we are going to be using the roof. It's actually called the roof right here. And we're going to be adding that on top. So to do the first thing we want to do is we want to use our work plane tool and we want to click the top and then we can drag this out and place it on top. The reason that we're doing that is we don't want to have to drag it up and get it in place and everything else. So what we'll do is we will align this to get this so it's the exact width of the house that we created. And then we will drag this out. Remember, if you're dragging this and it's not lining up perfectly, it's because you need to fix your snap grid. Mine is at 0.5, not at one anymore. So that's why I'm able to precisely do that. Now that our roof is in line, let's move the work plane back down. And you would say our house is looking pretty good and it's done, but we actually need to add something called shingles on top. Don't worry, they're pretty easy to make. And it's really just using the duplication tool and doing very, very minor movements with everything. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna select the work plane and we're gonna put it on the side of our house. And we are going to need to use this tool. It's called the wedge. And we're gonna add that onto the side and we're going to have to change the, side, the size of this. So we're gonna be reducing this down pretty, pretty low. So let's say we're gonna put that at one right now. And you're gonna grab, you're gonna hold shift and you're gonna grab the corner and you're gonna make this super small. So we have it as two by two. We want this to be two by one. And this is, see the, see the larger part is towards the back and the thinner part is towards the front. Now, because it's a roof and we want water flow, we actually want to rotate this around. So hold shift, rotate this 180 degrees. And now we have our first shingle. Now for our sake, we would normally, yeah, if you did a single shingle, you'd be putting one across everything. For us, you're gonna take this, you're gonna drag this across the entire top. So it's the same width, which we know the roof width was 60 from when we did this in the front. And there is your first layer of shingles. Okay, so after we have our first shingle, which we know is 60 by two, we are going to duplicate this, drag it down into the position that we want it to be at, which is about there. And while it's still highlighted, we're gonna control D and do that all the way down until we have that into position. Now, yes, it did come out a little bit slanted, but it's not a big deal to just shift these over and get these in line. Now, could you use the alignment tool? Absolutely. Did I teach you that skill yet? Absolutely not. That's actually in the next video series, but it's not really a huge deal. Um, we'll just shift these over a little bit. Once you get them all in line, then you'll be all set with this part. And then the other side, super easy because we're not going to remake all this we're just going to copy this so we don't want to have to do double work so the right side of our roof is looking pretty great so what we'll do here so that we can do this on the opposite side is we're going to hold shift and we're going to manually click every single one of these roofing tiles and we're going to group them together so control g to group that together. Now I'm going to control D. I'm going to duplicate that. 
And now what I need to do is I need to rotate this. So I'm gonna need to rotate this on the other side. The problem is, is our work plane is not allowing us to rotate it the way that we want. So we're gonna change the work plane to be over here now. And now it should be much, much easier to rotate this. So it's not giving me the precise movement that I want. So I'm gonna let go of shift that I've been holding this whole time. And now I can kind of get this into place as to where I want it to be. It's still not wonderful. And it looks like I will be able to line it up. That looks pretty lined up to me, but it's below. So I'm gonna need to just pull this up a little bit. You may need to play with this to get it just right, but in the end, it should look something like that when it's lined up, where it's overlapping the other one, and it should be off the house a little bit too. So now that my roof is done, I don't want the inside of this to look green. So first, let's reset the work plane. So I click over here, I reset the work plane, click this green, and let's just make this blue. There we go, that looks so much better. For good measure, now that our roof is done, control A, select it all, and control G, and group it all together. There's a lot of polygons, so sometimes it does take some time for the grouping to happen. We are so close to being done. All we have left now to do is we have to add our walkways and then we're going to add some trees and we're done here. So for our walkways, we're going to use a asset called brick wall. So you're going to go to the search tool and search brick and this should come up. And this is obviously way too big. So we're going to reduce the size of this quite a bit. You can see that it's scaling right now. It's because I'm holding shift as I do it. So we're gonna make this, let's say 12. And we're gonna rotate this so that it's on its side. So we'll rotate it 90 degrees. And the height of this is definitely way too high. So we're gonna make that height one. And to put this directly on the floor, when I drag it up, you can see the part where it's actually telling you the height. Let's make that zero. And we'll move this into position so it's even with the doorway. And now we can kind of see that because it's one inch wide, it's actually lining up with the bottom frame of the door, which is exactly what we would want for our home. Let's make a couple of these to be a roadway. So let's control D, duplicate that. Let's put that into position as to where we want it to be. D, D, so we have four of these. I don't wanna to have to remake all four, so I'm going to select all of them. So I'm holding shift and clicking each one. I'm gonna hit control D, put them over here and rotate them to be 90 degrees and get those in line. And now we've got our two roadways, but let's connect these. So this should be relatively simple as well. We're going to duplicate one of these and let's duplicate it again and essentially we're just creating a roadway let's we have to rotate this guy rotate it 90 degrees duplicate again oops but not actually that's the wrong one to duplicate we want to cut we want to duplicate this one time and now we're looking pretty good spacing on that isn't perfect but it's okay we could cheat a little we could drag that one out a little bit so it's it's at 14 and then it'll reach okay so now all we have left to do is to add our trees and we're going to add four trees so come over here let's type in tree we're going to grab this humongous tree. We're gonna hold shift and drag this down till it's at, let's say 13. So we'll actually just type in 13. Now that's the size of the tree that I want. We're gonna put it in place so it's between these two windows roughly. I'm going to duplicate this, control D 
drag it over. If I, I can look at this to make sure that they are aligned. If I didn't want to, if I wanted to pull it so it was perfectly straight, what I could do is I hit Control D, hold Shift, and then pull it to my right, and it will make sure that it's perfectly in line with that. For the other side, I'm gonna select both objects. I'm gonna hit Control D, hold Shift, and then I'll drag back. And now I can actually make sure that they are both exactly in line because I'm still holding shift. If you look at the bottom on the screen, you'll see that I'm holding that and that's what's actually keeping everything in line. Now we are completely done with our Tinkercad tutorial number three. And there it is. Absolutely fantastic job. To save our work, we're gonna move your mouse to the top left, click the Tinkercad dashboard logo. On the bottom left, it would have said saving your work. And there it is. There is our Tinkercad tutorial number three house that we built together. Please make sure you come back for Tinkercad tutorial number four, which is going to be with Ms. Giordano on how to resize, align, and rotate objects.